Okay. Well, thank you. I am Maria Concepcion Poma Rosselio, and uh, I am a university professor at VIU, Valencian International University in Spain, and I am currently doing a lot of research on metaverses as educative spaces. My university is 100% online, so it is interesting to uh, see if uh, this recent trend of resorting to metaverses to do things, to socialize, to work, to educate, etc., will be beneficial for the education of our students. So uh, the lecture uh, is titled The Metaverse as a Tool for Teaching and Analysis of Second Life, Minecraft and Animal Crossing New Horizons. They are the three metaverses that I researched the most, okay? So, well, I have already introduced myself. I'm going to present a historical perspective of the evolution of the metaverses up to the present day, in which uh, it, there is a lot of hype related to meta and all this uh, new interest in the metaverse, right? And then I, we are going to see the main uh, aspects related to Second Life, Minecraft and Animal Crossing. This is the index of the presentation. What is the metaverse? We are going to define the metaverse in simple lay terms. Who created the concept of the metaverse? An excerpt of Snow Crash, which was the first novel in which the term metaverse was used and also the concept of the metaverse. Ernest Klein and Ready Player One, which is another influential novel also turned into a movie by Steven Spielberg an assert from Ready Player One, the birth of Second Life as the first and original metaverse, the possibilities that Second Life offers to these users, to their users, other popular metaverses, just naming them, apart from Animal Crossing and uh, Minecraft, Second Life as an educative space, Minecraft as an educative space, and Animal Crossing New Horizons as an educative space. We are going to analyze these three metaverses. And then a few examples of what a lecture room can be in Second Life, in Minecraft, and in Animal Crossing New Horizons, right? And also uh, we are going to reflect on the question, is the metaverse the future in education? Any questions so far? All clear? Well, according to the Oxford Language Dictionary, a metaverse is a virtual reality space in which users can interact in a computer generated environment with other users. So we interact with other people through avatars in a digitally generated space. In plain terms, a metaverse is a virtual world. Many people can join through a computer, against console, etc., or even uh, virtual reality devices. And in this computer-generated virtual world, the users can interact through customized avatars. The players can also build and purchase items, build their personal areas, etc., often also called sandbox games because they are games in which you generally build in your own spaces. Who created the concept of metaverse? Well, this man that you can see here, who is Neil Stephenson. He is a fiction writer, cyberpunk writer, and he coined the term metaverse in his 1992's novel, Snow Crash. The novel is presented as a dystopian fantasy in which individuals connect globally to the metaverse. So it was the origin of the term. It is a virtual world in which you can relate with other users and even engage in illegal affairs. Stephenson's novel is dark and portrays the metaverse under a shady light. It is not a positive view of the concept of the metaverse, right? It is in a uh, dystopic world, right? F future. It is a vision that still prevails for many people that are not acquainted with this type of sandbox games or metaverses. They all have this idea that it is 
shady and this topic. So we are going to read an excerpt from Snow Crash and then we can contrast uh, if uh, this excerpt in particular uh, can define what we are experiencing in Second Life, for example. As he approaches the street, he sees two young couples probably using their parents' computers for a double date in the metaverse, climbing down out of port zero, which is the local port of entry and monorail stop. He's not seeing real people, of course. This is all part of the moving illustration drawn by his computer, according to specifications coming down the fiber optic cable. cable. The people are pieces of software called avatars. They are the audiovisual bodies that people use to communicate with each other in the metaverse. Hero's avatar is now on the street too. And if the couple's coming off the monorail loop covering his direction, they can see him just as he's seeing them. They could strike up a conversation. Hero in the story in LA and the four teenagers probably on the couch in a suburb of Chicago, each with their own laptop. But they probably won't talk to each other any more than they would in reality. These are nice kids and they don't want to talk to a solitary crossbreed with a sleek custom avatar who's packing a couple of swords. Page 33 of Snow Crash. Your avatar can look any way you want it to, up to the limitations of your equipment. If you are ugly, you can make your avatar beautiful. If you are just gotten out of bed, your avatar can still be wearing beautiful clothes and professionally applied makeup. You can look like a gorilla or a dragon or a giant talking pennies in the metaverse. Spend five minutes walking down the street and you will see all of this. And this is a picture by Izzy Medrano Canvas of this protagonist of the novel, Hero Protagonist is his name. Can you see that in Second Life, it is basically accomplished? This novel, which is from the 90s, uh, depicted a reality that we are seeing nowadays daily in Second Life, right? So it's interesting to see how partly this novel has become a reality with the concept of the metaverse being developed nowadays. Then we have Ernest Klein and Ready Player One. Okay, because uh, Second Life was released in 2003, it became popular very soon, and Ernest Klein in 2011. Uh, uh, this author wrote another influential work of fiction based on the concept of this metaverse, right? It is uh, again a dystopic future uh, portrayed in the novel and uh, the only pleasure so in this bad reality in this dystopian future is to connect to Oasis, which is the name of the avatar in this novel. The, of the metaverse in this novel and interact with the rest of the players there through their avatars apart from accomplishing quests and also checking, uh, trying to find the, the golden eggs, etc. Right? This novel was adapted for a film by Steven Spielberg in 2018 and soon became very popular. But again, portrays a metaverse under a very negative light in a dystopian future and people only resorting to oasis to, um, to, to escape reality, these kind of things, right? And now we are going to read an excerpt of Ready Player One. And we are going to see again these elements that uh, show that the protagonist is living in a miserable condition and his only uh, source of uh, intellectual nourishment, so to say, is his connection to Oasis. So the novel says, my mother Loretta had raised me on her own. 
We lived in a small RV in another part of the stacks. She had two full-time Oasis jobs, one as a telemarketer, the other as an escort in an online brothel. She used to make me wear earplugs at night so I wouldn't hear her in the next room, talking dirty tricks in other time zones. But the earplugs didn't work very well, so I would watch out movies instead with the volume turned way up. I was introduced to the Oasis at an early age because my mother used it as a virtual babysitter. As soon as I was old enough to wear a visa and a pair of haptic gloves, my mom helped me to create my first Oasis avatar. Then she strapped me in a corner and went back to work, leaving me to explore an entirely new world, very different from the one I'd known up until then. From that moment on, I was more or less raised by the OASIS interactive educational programs, which any kid could access for free. I spent a big chunk of my childhood hanging out in a virtual reality simulation of Season Street, singing songs with friendly Muppets, and playing interactive games that taught me how to walk, talk, add, subtract, read, write, and share. Once I'd mastered those skills, it didn't take me long to discover that the Oasis was also the world's biggest public library, where even a penniless kid like me had access to every book ever written, every song ever recorded, and every movie, television show, video game, and piece of hard work ever created. So as you can see, partly this is also true because the internet allows to many people, not only connections in different parts of the world, synchronized connections, but also uh, the, the um, receiving a lot of information through the browsers, through repositories, and to have access uh, to a great database that includes uh, movies, references to movies, music, and different channels, social networks in which share materials and information. So we can say that nowadays even uh, the, the poorest kids, if they had just one phone or one mobile phone, they have access to all these um, materials, right? So it is partly true what is stated in this novel as well. Let's take a look at the birth of Second Life as a metaverse or the original metaverse, right? This picture here is, um, um, uh, sorry, Philip Rosedale. Okay, so this is Philip Rosedale and he read the novel by Stephen Stephenson's and he decided that he wanted to create a metaverse in real life right with the technology available at the time in the 90s so he found the linden labs in 1999 and released it uh, in in 2003 released the very popular and versatile second life and second life soon became very popular and has remained popular ever since with around 64.7 million active users in 2021 and hosting areas that are cultural or educative of very prestigious institutions uh, like uh, Stanford University or the American Cancer Society. And for many of, of us that are investigating the metaverse and its history and evolution, it is considered the first real metaverse. The rest are um, uh, perhaps uh, have better graphics or other features, but this Metaverse Second Life is the one that tries to mimic Stephenson's mod novel the most. As regards the possibilities of Second Life, it is a platform that allows you not only to interact with other people through the avatars, but also you can have your own public space or private space. Uh, in which you can build virtually anything that you can find in a marketplace. You can also create your own objects or encourage the students to create objects, 
right? Uh, adding textures, uh, creating buildings, pieces of furniture, clothes for different kinds of uh, bodies, right? Classic bodies, mesh bodies of the avatars. Uh, you can also find almost anything that you can imagine at the marketplace with different avatars as well, etc. And also in your areas, you can play your own internet radio, which is an asset because you can create your own radio with your favorite music and it will play in your areas. And this also facilitates immersion. Apart from that, there are a lot of um, special effects in this area. You can hear as well the sound of waves, the sound of the birds chirping and um, uh, well, uh, it is uh, a metaverse that allows you a lot of immersion in in a digital and uh, visual and uh, auditory environment. But there are other popular metaverses that have been released after Second Life, right? Uh, this picture is me in Roblox and the, the other picture is my uh, Minecraft Academy. So after Second Life, many other platforms have been released that can be considered metaverses. Roblox in 2006, Minecraft in 2011, Omniverse in 2012, The Sandbox in 2012 as well, Decentraland in 2015, Fortnite in 2017, Zepeto in 2018, and Animal Crossing New Horizons in 2020, the, in the year of the pandemic. And after that, still in beta version, Horizon Worlds in, from Facebook's Meta in 2021, released, right? And you need um, um, uh, virtual reality devices to play in, in Meta, in Horizon Worlds. So Second Life as an educational space has a series of important advantages. Right. First of all, you can communicate in writing through chat and orally microphone. This makes it especially interesting for people that want to uh, that want to improve their English uh, orally and in writing. Right. And also to connect with people from other cultures in different parts of the globe synchronously. Then you also have a wide array of objects in the marketplace that are very detailed, uh, carefully textured, and very realistic and aesthetic that can furnish your areas according to your purposes or your liking. You can find, I don't know, medieval buildings. You can find uh, churches, cathedrals. You can find modern buildings, uh, sheep, right? So you, you, you can find uh, all sorts of objects or buildings uh, for you to set up in your area. Then you also have interactive objects that you, you can use to implement your lessons in Second Life, like YouTube TVs, projectors, blackboards, quiz objects, uh, and etc. Uh, and they are relatively easy to set up when they work properly. And you can combine it very well with exercises in LMS platforms like Moodle. You can implement the lesson in Second Life and then add the quizzes, the exercises, etc., in your Moodle platform. And you can also take screen captures of your areas in Second Life and add them to your Moodle platform so that you can combine the benefits of both. The disadvantages, I think that the greatest and I, I would even say the only important disadvantage that Second Light, has, uh, Second Light has is that it allows you nudity. Not only that it allows nudity, but sometimes when you go to an area uh, in which there are many people, the clothes take their time to rest and this is risky and therefore um, it is not very appropriate for younger students because it's risky, right? Another um, disadvantage it has is that it is expensive. 
it is expensive as regards the amount of land that you can purchase, the objects and the prisms that you can press in your land as compared to other metaverses. For example, in Minecraft, you pay a monthly fee and you have almost unlimited land to build in, right? And here you have these small parcels and they are not really cheap, right? Then some people say it is a platform uh, suitable for adult activities or for um, flirting, right? Yes, many users use Second Life for that, but of course there is also a very important uh, educational community. And uh, this is prevalent as regards the educative use of Second Life. Uh, but uh, it, we can say that for some people it has bad reputation. And finally, it, it's not very, very easy to get started, particularly as regards scripting, managing objects, editing objects. Some objects cannot be uh, customized. Some objects are very complicated. You have to add, for example, animations to your chairs, etc. So uh, it, it is not really uh, very easy to get started. Uh, from scratch without help, right? Oops. Here. Then we have Minecraft. Minecraft is safer for miners, right? It is a platform that uh, is the recommended age is around eight, 10 years minimum, right? You can have your own private realm and uh, in in creative and pacific mode, you don't uh, experience any form of um, of violence or or bad language, etc. You can invite only the person that you are interested in to your area, and uh, it is a safe space in that in that sense. It is a private realm. Right, it is also much more affordable than Second Life as regards the amount of land that you have available uh, with a private realm and Minecraft when uh, you compare it with the fees that you have to pay for a land in Second Life, right? Uh, there are no space limitations. The immersive experience is complete and nice. This is also another advantage. You can choose the music, but the music that comes with the metaverse is very nice by default, right? It is nice and relaxing. And uh, of course, for the younger students, building the objects instead of just going to the marketplace and purchasing the objects is always a more interesting option so that they um, imagine how to create an object, they resort to tutorials on YouTube on how to create a specific object. So uh, it is much more interesting, in my opinion, for the younger students that they, they build from scratch, that they simply purchase at the marketplace, right? Then as regards to these advantages, uh, it is difficult to uh, communicate orally on Minecraft. You need mobs or add-ons or other tools or even uh, create your presentations or your lessons and uh, present them also through Zoom, right? Building can require a lot of time breaking blocks just to make the land flat, right? And this can be boring for the students. In some aspects, it can be a boring uh, game. Then the non-playable characters are out of control most of the time. <laughs> the farm animals escape, fish disappear, uh, the villagers, uh, instead of going to their houses, they, they take refuge in the barns. Uh, this is also funny, right? When you are playing, this is also funny to experience, but uh, it's a little bit out of control. And it's necessary to resort to guidelines to get started because it's quite complicated to get started in Minecraft without a tutorial or without a little bit of help, right? 
Then as regards Animal Crossing New Horizons, this is a very interesting uh, metaverse or sandbox game because it was released during the pandemic year and many families got one copy so that they could play with the children because it's a very relaxing game that also allows you to connect to other islands, to other areas, to other players. And it's an extremely pacific, cute game, right? You water your plants, you um, change your clothes, no nudity is allowed, right? Uh, you take care of the environment, you fish, you catch bugs. So they are all very, um, very pacific activities and it's suitable for children. You can create very interesting lessons with Animal Crossing New Horizon as regards teaching science, teaching language, etc. Okay, doesn't allow nudity, it portrays positive environmental and cultural values, even the sense of a community with an unplayable characters or even with the friends you connect with. In the game, you learn a lot about the wide array of insects, fish, fossils as well, recipes, traditional clothing from other cultures. And you can teach a lot of things through Animal Crossing New Horizon, but it's particularly interesting as regards STEM lessons. Again, it is much more affordable as regards the amount of land. If you purchase the game, you have a whole island. Right, you have your whole island. You don't need to pay more if the island is bigger, less if the island is smaller, right? So just uh, get a copy of the game, get a Nintendo Switch, and uh, that's it. You have your own whole island. You don't have to worry about paying monthly fees, right? It is a very social game, and the community is very interesting because. They like to exchange objects to help each other, etc. And it is very, very easy to learn because the instructions are provided by the rest of the characters in a gradual manner. The disadvantages of Animal Crossing New Horizons as a metaverse to implement teaching programs. It is not very convenient to communicate through the chat. And again, uh, it doesn't allow voice chat, like in Minecraft. You can connect through voice. You need to combine it with Zoom or similar other uh, applications. It takes a lot of time to complete your academy. If you want to build an academy, I have an academy built there, unless someone helps you out because you can't purchase items, you just find them randomly. Some players might exploit the resources of their island too much without measured consequences, which is against the spirit of the game. But some people do that. They cut down all the trees and they build, basically destroy the island. This is something that you can also do. But of course, you get uh, stars, a rating, a star rating, if your island is full of flowers, trees, fruit trees, etc. So the game rewards uh, good environmental habits. And of course, instead of just uh, being able to connect through a computer, you need a Nintendo Switch to use Animal Crossing New Horizons. So you will need a Nintendo Switch and your possible students will also need a Nintendo Switch as well. And well, the rest of the presentation are screen captures of different uh, learning spaces that I have set up in Minecraft, in Second Life, and in Animal Crossing New Horizons. The first one is this lecture room that you can, you can see that there are many seats, there are many projectors, there is a YouTube TV, uh, and also a space here where uh, we can have uh, interviews with just two, three people, etc. Well, this is the inside. As you can see you can also make the projectors look like a blackboard. Then if you go outside, you will see a second lecture room that I have, which is underwater, right? So adding a bit of fantasy. And it is surrounded by a very special marine biome. 
with many fish and uh, many elements from the sea. And they are very realistic fish and elements, right? I invite you to visit that uh, after finishing this, this lecture. This is the inside of this underwater lecture room. So you can see uh, from the inside, you can see the outside and the fish swimming outside and it's uh, calming and nice. It is uh, smaller than this one. So. Then this is my classroom on Minecraft. In Minecraft, instead of just buying the furniture, I had to build it myself. It was fun indeed to find out how to build furniture on Minecraft. Yeah, I have a, a very thick blackboard and a very thick uh, whiteboard. Then uh, this is the kitchen in the, um, in the academy that I created on Minecraft. I also created a space in which you could build, for example, um, different kinds of rooms that are important for a house, like a kitchen, a bedroom, a bathroom. And it is a challenge to build all the objects, right? So this is a picture of the kitchen. And you can challenge the students, hey, for today, today's lesson is going to be about creating uh, a kitchen in, uh, in second, uh, I'm sorry, in, in Minecraft, right? How are you going to do that? Okay, uh, are you going to watch tutorials? Are you going to organize uh, yourself in groups, right? So, so you can encourage the students to, to experiment uh, when building, uh, for example, a bedroom or a kitchen or bathroom, etc. So this is nice. This is how my academy looks on those side. It's um, it's very simple looking, but it's very spacious inside. You can see that you can also take care of the vegetation as well, and it's uh, very uh, versatile. It looks looks good when you know how to build. Another capture, you can see here crops that you can plant seeds. In this case, these all are um, cocoa seeds. Then you can also have underwater areas. And these uh, underwater areas, you can see kelp towers, the dolphins, uh, puffer fish, and uh, coral reefs. Uh, different kinds of algae. So it is a good setting to teach about biomes as we will see in a second. And this is my Academy in Animal Crossing, you know, New Horizons. This is the first room when you en enter the building. This is the first room and it looks like a little bit like a small office desk, right? And this is the smallest classroom that I have only for, for students, but uh, we will see in the following video that uh, you can use it for cre creating your lessons, even if it's small. Then I also have two larger rooms. This one uh, is uh, for uh, uh, learning about fossils, learning about chemistry, learning about science and uh, the fish and the insects that the students uh, catch in the game. And this other lecture room is more informal. You can see coffee cups on the table. They are anatomical models and it is more related to artistic creation which is also an option in Animal Crossing New Horizons. And of course, uh, you have your beautiful projector in which you can edit your materials. So is the metaverse the future in education? I have taken this quote uh, by Sheila Janagan uh, from Open Learning Campus. And she says, before and during COVID-19, learning had already begun to move from physical classrooms to more virtual and blended spaces. The metaverse facilitates an immersive campus life where learners wearing VR headsets 
enter the virtual campus or university to learn, explore and socialize. In this digital space, for example, learners can delve into different learning pods, visit libraries and breakout rooms, meet coaches and counselors and hang out with peers. These digital experiences can truly democratize education by bringing people from geographically dispersed locations and varied economic backgrounds together to learn in a cost-effective, flexible and quicker duration. For example, in September 2023, the Planet Kenya Case Virtual Campus, located 60 kilometers from the capital city of Nairobi, will allow the institution to extend their reach across continents, allowing the students to learn together on cutting edge topics without having to leave their home countries. So for many people, the metaverse is uh, interesting as a vision of the future and related to the future of education. And well, I wanted to end the, um, I'm going to stop sharing the screen just to um go to the video okay and i want to show you the the videos that i created one second please this is one my animal crossing horizons academy Maria Concepción Pomar Rosselló presents Let's learn about frogs Welcome to our first session My name is Maria Concepción Pomar Rosselló And today we are going to learn many interesting facts about frogs Are you excited my students? Cool! I love frogs! I've always wanted to learn more about amphibians. Exactly, Maria! Frogs and toads are amphibians, together with salamanders and newts. But why are they called amphibians? Do you remember the answer? Yes, I do remember, Mrs. Pomar. Amphibians are animals that can live on land and in water. Oh, I didn't remember the answer. I should have studied yesterday night. Exactly, Dan. Amphibians can live on land and in water. Good answer. Hey, <laughs> yesterday I studied a lot. Mammals need to breathe air through their lungs to live. And fish get oxygen through their gills. Although there are mammals who live in water too, like dolphins or whales. Amphibians have three ways to get oxygen, through their lungs, their skin and their mouth. This is how they can live in water and, at the same time, live on land. They need both to survive, that's why you have to keep them in a terrarium. This picture shows the respiratory system of frogs and amphibians in general. They breathe air through the nostrils and the lungs when out of the water. And they breathe the oxygen in water through their skin and the lining of their mouths. Frogs produce mucus through their skin to keep it moist and clean. Mucus? I'm never ever kissing a frog! Ugh! And where do frogs live, Mrs. Pomar? I'm still in shock. I'm so happy I'm not a princess. Frogs live in ponds, rivers, lakes, swamps. 
They live in places near air and fresh, sweet water. The vast majority of frogs can live in salt water. If exposed to salt, the skin dries up and they die. The young frogs or tadpoles can thrive either in saline environments, neither the eggs. And now let's talk about the life cycle of frogs. Whoa, Mrs. Pomar is getting too enthusiastic. Scary. From eggs to adulthood, frogs go through several metamorphoses. This means that they completely change their body as they grow up. It's a fascinating process. First of all, mama frog lays her eggs. These eggs will grow into tadpoles. Then tadpoles grow legs, lose their tail, and ta-da, you have an adult frog. Tadpoles can only live in water. Only adult frogs have lungs and breathe air. Remember, this transformation process is called metamorphosis. Oh, this is getting complicated. When I grow up, I will metamorphose into a beautiful butterfly. And now, let's talk about what tadpoles and frogs eat. Tadpoles live all the time in fresh water and they eat basically algae. But sometimes they can also feed on rotten fish or insects in the water. Frogs are omnivores, they eat algae, plants and insects that also live near fresh water. On the other hand, remember what we said, tadpoles are mostly herbivores. I need to take notes of all this info, it's complicated! And this is the end of our lecture on the fantastic world of tadpoles and frogs. Oh no, she's getting enthusiastic again. And now let's have a review session. How much have you learned today? Let's start with the first question. Time to flex our mind muscles. I want to get an A+. Plus. First question. Amphibians are lizards, frogs and turtles. Is it correct? Hmm, I think I know the answer. The correct answer is no. Only frogs, toads, newts and salamanders can be considered amphibians. Did you get it right? Let's see the second question. What do you call the frogs' transformation process as they grow up? I know the answer to this one. Well, if you answered metamorphosis, you are correct. You are doing exceptionally well. Let's ask an easy one now. Frogs are omnivores. This means they only eat plants. Is this correct? Oh, this question is very difficult. The answer is incorrect. Frogs are omnivores, which means that they eat plants and small animals too. Ok, my students, let's ask a final one for today. Frogs are capable of breathing through their skin. Is this correct? I know this one. I know this one. The answer is yes, they do breathe through their skin. You did exceptionally well. I'm very proud of you. Thank you very much, teacher. We loved your lessons very much. Please do keep on studying about amphibians, toads and frogs. Thank you so much for watching.
Okay. Um, one second, please. And I'm going to show you the second video that I have prepared for you. Can you share the links to the videos, please? Sorry? Can you share the links to the videos? Yes, of course. Uh, one second. One second, please. Could you uh, listen to everything correctly? Yes, it sounded amazing. Absolutely amazing. We loved it. Oh, really? Thank you. I Thank say you. we because that's the comments. That yes, I'm got. seeing them now. Yes. Wow. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. Well, I'm going to show you a second one, which is about Minecraft, in which I also created an academy, etc. One second, please, that I look for the video. You know, the, the fact that I couldn't make the, the TV work uh, has made me a little bit nervous. So, uh, one second. One second. Okay, one second, please. I'm going to share. Here. And this is the second video that I have done about biomes. Can you see it? Yes, we can. Thank you, thank you. Maria Concepción Pomar Rosselló presents Biomes in Minecraft Learning about freshwater ponds A video created in Minecraft Welcome to Communicate What You Think Academy. I am Maria Concepción Pomar Rosselló, university professor and researcher, particularly interested in education and the metaverse. Today, I want to invite you to learn how to create a biome in Minecraft. A biome is a naturally occurring environment in which several forms of fauna and flora coexist and create a community that nourishes the habitat. There are many types of biomes in nature, like the Arctic tundra, the Arabian deserts, the African savanna, the Mediterranean forest, and many, many others. Biomes are formed according to multiple factors, like the climate, the type of soil, humidity, the presence of water, the seasons, etc. The animals and vegetation that are suitable due to their characteristics for living in this habitat grow and reproduce in permanent interaction, predating each other, eating plants or algae, or simply coexisting peacefully. In today's lecture, we are going to create and analyze Atlantic ecosystem, that is, a still freshwater habitat, a lake or small pond. Let's get started then. The first thing we have to do to create this biome in Minecraft is find a good spot in our realm 
with plenty of shallow and fresh still water. Communicate what you think Academy is a private and safe realm, set up in creative and pacific mode. As we are playing in this mode, there will be no shortage of materials. As you can see, I already have several biomes here, apart from a farm and a small village. Let's walk past the horses and the llamas, and past this small forest of conifers, spruce trees to be precise, and you can see that we are reaching a watery area, in which you can find bamboos and water lilies. This area looks nice and appropriate. There is a little bit of sand and a little bit of soil here. Of course you can edit all this, but I love this area. Exactly as it is, with plenty of shallow water. And I think it's perfect to create authentic freshwater biome. Take that into account. For a freshwater biome, in which turtles, frogs, etc. can live, you need clean, shallow water and a mild temperature. Let's start our pond adding algae to the bottom, where the water is shallow we'll plant plenty of algae, precisely sea grass. In spite of its name it can also grow in semi-fresh water. Sea grass provides plenty of nutrients to the fauna, living in your pond or your terrarium. It provides nitrogen as well, which is essential for the aquatic microorganisms. Apart from that it is a crucial form of shelter for fish and amphibians in your freshwater biomes. Seagrass also produces a lot of oxygen when it does the photosynthesis. However, algae can become a problem if left untreated in small aquariums or terrariums because it grows and reproduces a lot and can turn the water greenish. Seaweed is a generic name for many species of algae. They are grossly classified as red, green or brown algae. You can see an example of red seaweed in this video. This is a saline environment though. You can see how these tiny opossum shrimps find shelter and food amongst the seaweeds. The vast majority of opossum shrimps live in salt water, with less than 10% found in freshwater areas. As I am planting the seagrass, we have company. This turtle wants a bite of this tasty algae I'm planting. Many species of turtles live in salt and fresh water. You shouldn't mistake them for tortoises. Tortoises live on land. Tortoises are basically epivores, occasionally omnivores. One of the most characteristic features of Minecraft is mixing fantasy with reality and science. One of the objects we are going to use now to set up our biome is sea pickles. They are basically underwater candles. Nevertheless, there are indeed water creatures that are bioluminescent, that is, they produce light. For example, some jellyfish and algae. This creature, though, is real. It's a sea cucumber. Sea cucumbers are echinoderms, that is, they belong to the same family as a starfish. Sea urchins, sand dollars, and crinoids. Unfortunately, sea cucumbers are endangered, for they are considered a delicacy in Asian cuisine. Now that the space is lit up, it's time to plant some kelp. Kelp grows basically in saline waters but we will resort to fantasy and add a bit to our biome. Kelp is a popular algae because it can be consumed. What you are seeing now is a kelp forest. These grey kelp towers shelter many fish and creatures, as well as provide plenty of nourishment. In Japan, kelp is consumed as kombu. With the addition of kelp, the floor of our biome is ready. Even in the game, kelp towers grow very fast. You'll see that when you create your own biome. It is one of the fastest growing organisms in the world.
you can see that the kelp is already growing. Now let's go back outside and plant some ferns. Ferns grow often in wild, very humid environments. Ferns need a lot of humidity to grow and thrive. That's why it's an appropriate plant to decorate ponds or very large terrariums with freshwater areas. Ferns produce plenty of oxygen for the biome. They are considered non-flowering vascular plants. Vascular plants have veins that transport nutrients, water, etc. to all the parts of the plant or tree. Most trees, shrubs, etc. are vascular organisms. Another fantastic element in Minecraft is a glowing lichen, lichen that is bioluminescent. In real life, lichen does not produce light but some fungi and algae, as we have already seen, do. They are beautiful, right? They can produce the light thanks to an enzyme that is called luciferase. In real life, lichen grows in very humid environments. It has characteristics of both plants, algae and fungi. These organisms live in lichen in symbiosis. Now let's add a carpet of moss to our biome. Moss is a non-vascular organism. It is a community of very small flowerless plants. Moss typically grows in moist environments. As it forms carpets, it helps prevent soil erosion. Moss grows only in freshwater environments. You can't find moss at the beach, only algae. The presence of moss helps sustain the environment. It produces lots of oxygen and nutrients. Moss can also be adapted to drier environments. The presence of moss is a sign of a healthy habitat. Now that the land and other water areas are ready, let's add some water lilies to our biome, so that the frogs can hop on them. This is how water lilies look like in real life. Do you know the difference between water lilies and lotus flowers? They are two different species of aquatic plants. Water lilies float on the water's surface and the leaves have a distinctive cut to drain water while lotus flowers and leaves rise slightly above the water surface. Lotus flowers also need more fertile waters. Now the setting is ready! Apart from the kelp, all the vegetation we've added is consistent with a freshwater biome. Now let's add some tadpoles to the mix. Tadpoles are young frogs or toads going through a process of metamorphosis. At this stage they still behave like small fish. Now let's try adding some axolotls. As we can see they can't coexist with the tadpoles the axolotls are making a feast with them. We can see that axolotls are fast predators. Axolotls are a species of amphibians. 
They belong to the family of salamanders. Wild axolotls can be found in several lakes in Mexico. They are considered to be critically endangered. They are also highly popular as pets. Axolotls eat small fish, tadpoles, worms, shrimp and even other salamanders. Now let's try adding some adult frogs. Fortunately the axolotls are leaving them alone and you can see them jumping happily around. This is a frog on a lily pad. Adult frogs need a water and land environment. Therefore, they can be found in ponds, lakes, swamps and similar habitats. They need plenty of fresh water where to lay eggs. With the addition of frogs, our pond biome is ready. You can also add some freshwater fish, provided that they are compatible with frogs, toads and axolotls. And this is how you create a biome in Minecraft. Could you reproduce it in real life? With the help of your teacher in class, we'll create a terrarium all together. If you remember all this info, it'll be easy. And this was today's lesson. I hope you have enjoyed learning about biomes, especially about freshwater environments. Thanks for watching and see you in class! And well, that was it. Did you like it? That was, oh, sorry. Uh, uh, one second, the, the link. Sorry, I forgot the link to the second video. Maria? Here is the link to the second video. Well, did you like the materials uh, that I created showing in, in what ways we can use these metaverses to teach a little bit of science, a little bit of uh, basically anything to the young children. The first video is about, uh, well, it's, it's more suitable for very young children. It's, it's basic lesson about frogs, but it's cute, etc. The second lesson could be used for children in primary or even secondary learning English. And uh, instead of just a list of facts, it is um, uh, interesting because you teach while you create on Minecraft. So what, what do you think? Please, a little bit of feedback. And thank you so much for coming and uh, listening hold to Hold on, lecture. hold on, Maria, hold on. Can you, um, sorry about that. Um, I let everybody unmute themselves. Uh, there were some questions about uh, the first video. Oh, yes, uh, yes, please. Can you uh, stop screen sharing, maybe? So, or put your video, your webcam on so we could see you? Oh, my video is disconnected, sorry. Yes, I'm here. Yeah, there it is. Okay, great. All right. Um, yeah, there's a... There was a question about the first video. What platform? I heard the word horizon. It's not Facebook Meta Horizon, is it? No, no, it is not. Uh, it's Good. Animal Crossing New Horizons. Can you share the link of that? Is is it a free platform or it's uh, it costs for schools? How does it work? It uh, this is for uh, Nintendo Switch for game console. It's for Nintendo Switch. And it is a game, but it is also a metaverse because uh, you can connect to the creations to other people. 
right? So the, the first video is uh, this game, Animal Crossing New Horizons. Do you want the link? One yeah, second. You mentioned that you had a room there. How does that work? Well, uh, when you start the game, uh, you have the option to create a house. And instead of creating a house, I created a series of rooms, a series of teaching rooms in which I can host up to uh, eight students apart from me. Right, so uh, if you are interested in knowing more about the, this, this uh, academy that I have in Animal Crossing New Horizons, I can send you, um, because I have to upload the video on YouTube and I can send you all a lecture that I gave with, uh, when I, an interview rather that I, that I had with, uh, with a PhD student, a friend of mine, and I showed her all my area. So maybe you would like to watch this video. Yeah, I think that would be great. Yes, I, yes. I subscribe to your YouTube channel. I think that others, uh, thank can, you. Do it. others can do it too. And then we could, um, you know, follow you and get but, your yeah. videos. I think that that was great. That I mean, and the Minecraft, there were people watching. I think there are about 26, 30 people watching. And the one question was about, uh, I think the turtle, uh, he wanted an answer about the turtle. What's the answer? Um, which one? The, uh, which question was it about the turtle? Know. I don't know, but he asked, uh, I don't know. Maybe he'll ask uh, again. I think he's there on, yeah. Um, can you accompany this with readings? That was another question. Or do you lecture students to explain? That was with Minecraft. They were really surprised about Minecraft, the fact that you can create a lesson that way uh, using Minecraft. And uh, they wanted to know if you accompany, do you accompany this with readings? Yes, I could do that. Well, first of all, uh, these two videos that I have shown you, are uh, just to show a sort of exercise to show the many possibilities that it has. Yes, I absolutely can create, for example, a Moodle teaching about biomes or uh, creating a classroom of students, 12 year olds, 13 year olds, etc., different groups and assign a biome to each student. Uh, five students, a group of five will do, for example, desert, another group of five, uh, tundra, another group of five, uh, forest, uh, or tropical forest, etc. And they can build these biomes in Minecraft, or uh, you can even uh, do the exercise uh, to create a terrarium. Right. If the, the materials and the space are available, you can uh, take the video and use it as a guideline for creating a terrarium. First, you need to add the soil, the sand, the rocks, etc., and also the ferns, etc. Uh, so, so yes, uh, you can. Uh, the, the problem with Minecraft is that it doesn't allow you to share voice. Therefore. Uh, what you have to do is to combine it with Zoom as we are doing right now. But we can do that perfectly. But you mentioned Moodle and that really interests me because that's what I do. I use Moodle with my students for everything, um, whether it's face to face or, you know, when we were locked down, uh, we use Zoom and Moodle. Uh, the question is, uh, you group them, as I understand it, uh, there's the grouping feature on Moodle and then they work in teams uh, through Minecraft, but they can also work face-to-face -face if it's a face-to-face -face class, but yours is completely virtual, am I right? Yes, yes, the, the, as I am a university professor teaching online, oh no, online university, my research is focused on online teaching, yes. Uh, uh, yes, what you can do is, for example, create lessons like the ones that we have seen, lessons, and then uh, upload the links to these lessons. Or if you have a good account in Moodle that allows you a space, 
you upload the videos on of the lessons and then you can create you know uh, the uh, lesson plans the series of activities the series of exercises exams or even uh, other forms of assignments you know that in moodle you can add videos uh, links to other sites for example you can ask the students to create a mind map about amphibians right or um, to create a poplet or a mind domo you can combine it with other uh, digital tools to work uh, online uh, to create material and to uh, arrange the information and organize information, present it. What I do is I use a noto, I upload uh, YouTube videos, and then um, a noto is a way for, for Moodle, it's on Moodle, for uh, students to interact with a video. So they ask questions, they work together, they can work together in teams as well and or the whole class so uh, i think that even youtube videos are quite good uh, yes if, if you want to create videos for you know you don't want to take too much room yeah exactly yes and you can also use educa plays so they, uh, good i will I will remember that uh yes yeah you can also use padlets there are many many digital tools that we can use Right, but um, the important thing is that um, these metaverses can be used as transmedia uh, forms of narration as well. Uh, you can interact with other people in the metaverse and teach at the same time, or you can even record the narration, an animation as we have seen, uh, the two videos that we have seen that I created are animations basically right and it's a lesson and then the following lesson can be modified according to the students needs or feedback or you can even encourage the students to create their own animations on minecraft for example right and it, this is very easy to do to record themselves building this or that piece of furniture this or that building uh, so uh, it's it's interesting right there's another question there uh, by um, Mariel. Mariel, you can unmute yourself. Okay. Anyone, you can unmute yourselves and ask your question. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, yes, new, uh, is there a course that you can take to start from zero, scratch, and learn how to do it? To, to learn about the metaverses? Uh, for zero, to build it. How to build it. Uh, so like I know how to do a, a Bitmoji class, so kind of that, but yeah, to make it interactive, to learn how to do it, the process of uh, of uh, making the videos, and that is like, like a beginner person doing Second Life. Is there a, a course that I can take? Yeah, you can join us in VW MOOC 22. Uh, exactly. <laughs> that's what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. So yes. when, is, when does and that There is also start? going to be uh, something like that in, for the Evo Village. Yes, that's uh, what I was thinking sessions. too. In, so when is that? Uh, in in February. We'll send you the information, Mara. But for now, why don't you just join the Moodle area and- uh, we'll... Yes, join the Moodle and you can be in touch. And <laughs> I yeah. am going to be sharing all that also. Here, let me so, share okay. it in the chat yeah. for you and anyone else who wants, who hasn't joined yet. Uh, there it is, Mariel. That's in the- In Argentina, they that's say- the link. Ah, acete amigo, acete amigo. So this is how we <laughs> say in Argentina. So be a friend. <laughs> yes. Got it. Uh, have you joined the Moodle, Maria? Because you, there's an open discussion where anyone and you can prompt it or others can ask questions about the sessions or anything related to the metaverse and um, education. Oh, is, is I will. It? I will join tonight. Thank you. I will. Like, I I definitely want to join because answering a little bit the question as well. I I self learned through tutorials and through uh, the community. Uh, th this is an interesting question. If there is a course, actually, one of the things that I have discovered that are most interesting about metaverses is the power of the community. When you don't know how to get. Uh, something done you ask for help to somebody who has more experience and this is uh, really really nice for minecraft there is a 
there are beautiful communities on YouTube. Then on Facebook, there are beautiful communities on Animal Crossing New Horizons that exchange objects and advice. And in Second Life, you can find uh, always people in your area that help you out. I don't know how to do this, how to do that. So I self-learned, but I also learned thanks to the power of the community. But I, I will definitely take the course because there are still many things that I have to learn to do. <laughs> great, thank you. I think that's thank what's you. great, Mariel and others, is the fact, I think we mentioned that at the opening, the fact that, uh, you know, it never ends. There's always, the more you learn, the more you realize that there is more to learn. So I think that's what's exciting, that it's uh, it's an ongoing process and we're all learning together wherever we happen to be. And, and I love this idea of what they're doing in Nairobi, by the way. I'd love to connect. Uh, can you send the information through when you go into the Moodle, perhaps start the discussion there? Because I think there would be a huge interest. I think I heard something about it vaguely. Uh, this idea of from Nairobi, of all places, connecting uh, with other schools from around the world. This is something that we did in uh, the early 2000, mid 2000. And I think it's back. And uh, and that's great. Wonderful. Yes, uh, uh, of course, uh, I, I, I will be interested in in doing this research even more, right? You know, I am also studying the metaverses and the metaverse communities in an ethnographic manner for my master and uh, everything related to uh, what you have written, the power of the community in relation to uh, the the space, the virtual space, because actually what makes the metaverse special is not what you can build, is not these kind of things. It is the power of the community, it's the people that you meet, it is the people that you get to know, that help you, that you help, right? That visit your area, that you visit their area as well. And apart from that, uh, it, they are generally relaxing, nice spaces. You know, there is something interesting, which is uh, that um, the, these novels I mentioned are so dystopic, etc. But actually, uh, many people would want uh, when they join a sandbox game, <coughs> sorry, is to relax. And this is interesting because uh, Animal Crossing New Horizons was a form of distraction during the COVID quarantine. And curiously enough, during a dystopian situation, which was COVID-19, many people resorted to video games, right? So uh, it is nice to see how literature has become a, a reality in many senses and is becoming a reality in many senses, but let's hope that not in a dystopian future, right? But it is uh, in the Animal Crossing sales in, in, in 2022, uh, sorry, in 2020, uh, they, they mentioned that, that many people uh, purchased the game because it was basically relaxing and they, they, they got distracted from the quarantine, from the fear, from the anxiety, from the situation. So uh, we could start a nice discussion about this as well. Yes, the power of the people. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Yeah. So you're losing your voice. Uh I think that's where that's where virtual worlds come in handy, where you don't have to use your voice all the time as you do on Zoom. Yes, <laughs> so there are advantages to being in virtual worlds and not being face to face with students all the time or, you know, in Zoom, which is, you know, like a face to face environment where you have to overuse your voice. <laughs> yes. yes. I would like to say that educators will make the difference in the metaverse. So it's up to us. Okay, we have a big responsibility on this. We can make it different. Yeah, we've, so, we, we've got to fight uh, Facebook. You have no idea what Facebook is doing with the metaverse. I mean, I've, I went in there. You have no idea uh, what they're doing. They're, 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 they're trying to do. I hope they fail. So it's really up to us, your right doors, to take action and uh, make it for education and not for business. Yes. Well, in let me tell you that in Virtual World uh, MOOC 2022 or, or all the virtual, uh, virtual World MOOC that we have, 
uh, had the, the pleasure to, to organize. Uh, we had met a lot of educators that are right now, like, you know, we are working really hard to make it uh, different. And all of them are like, okay, this is something that we had to talk about. It's not going to be tough. So here we go. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I, I completely agree with with uh, with Doris uh, that we are going to make the difference, and I'm certain about that because uh, seeing Zuckerberg tell, told about meta change, etc., uh, it has become a hot topic, and many more people and many more educators are interested. Uh, I am also. I am also doing bibliometric analysis, and there are a lot of publications, publications on uh, Web of Science, Scopus, etc., uh, with a lot of academic research related to education in Second Life, in Minecraft, in even in Animal Crossing. So, so it's it's a, a topic of interest for many researchers and educators. I think it's also a matter of digital literacy. Okay. So educators yeah. need to get their hands on, on this and start learning. And virtual worlds or what we have done, because we are like pioneers on this, because we have done this for many years and we have seen the, that it works, okay? Um, uh, this is something that sooner or later, everybody is going to have to do, because uh, as they say, is the fourth evolution of the internet. Uh, right now, uh, uh, you know, all the, there is uh, this competition among platforms. And, and what is the good thing about this is that each one is getting new tools and new ways. So there's going to be something that will work out for everybody, okay? It's going to be like uh, now, right now, everybody has a mobile on their hands. So, um, the sooner teachers, uh, educators get involved in, in this uh, new literacy, uh, the better we'll be able to help our students and, and teach what they really need for the, uh, the, the present and the future that they need to be ready for. I agree. And I also I would also add that this is going to be the new form of art. Oh, I like right. that you mentioned art, a lot of creativity. And I think that's, uh, that's what it's all about. The fact that you can create, that's so yes. important. Yeah. With AI, uh, mid journey, have you seen the, the, the images that people produce just by telling them what they want? Um, it is amazing. It is amazing, the beautiful things that can be done. So creativity is, it is exploding, I think. Yes. All right. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Maria, for uh, giving us so much history, so many things that uh, we could look back on and look forward to. And uh, we're looking forward yeah. to continuing this conversation. I did. Yeah. Yes. My, my uh, desserts. A round of applause. Yes, you did wonderful, Maria. Thank you. Thank you. So much. you. I'm Thank really you. sorry about the the video not working on, and I got a bit nervous, but then I I used. <laughs> but that's part of it. That that's the growth yes. <laughs> of doing things. If you don't do things, you're not things aren't going to go wrong. So would you yeah, rather yeah, do nothing and, and nothing goes wrong? But if you do something, you know that comes with the territory, and I think it's uh, it's amazing. Anyways, it was lovely to be in the. I'm, I think I'm still there. I'm probably falling asleep there. No, nope, my head is still up. I'm still in there. I think it's a lovely room, and um, and maybe we'll have some questions about the room, and maybe you know we're looking forward to hearing more from you. And yes, research, of course. Absolutely, and uh, just visit, you have to visit my underwater room. It's just below the stairs, and you will get that, and it's very relaxing. It's very nice as well. It's a well, little first bit of smaller. all, I'm making friends with you, so we'll be. <laughs> That's the advantage of being in the room with you in Second Life. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, thank you so much for the kind feedback on the videos. It was hard work to create both of them, but I loved every minute of it. And that's why I think that uh, this is going to be a new form of art and it's going to comprise education, digital creation, transmedia narration, um, methodology like project-based learning, uh, um, content and language integrated learning. So I think this is very interesting. And the, I, I agree that we are pioneers in many senses and it's very exciting. <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned CLIL because that's the first thing I thought of when oh, yes. in your lesson with the frog. <laughs> that was they beautiful. are absolutely the CLIL. That was beautiful. Yes. Yeah, I teach CLIL at university and I did a course with Phil Ball. And uh, yes, they are the two, the two lessons are clear. The, the the two lessons are clear in different ways for different ages, but yes, they are clear. So well, right. thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you so everyone. much. Thank you for being here, and we'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow, by the way, be there, Mariel. Uh, it's for you because you're going to learn about get an avatar. If you don't already have one, you're going to learn about getting clothes for okay. your Okay, what time is uh, tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow, uh, Easter time? Uh, wait, uh, you got the link to join, right? That it's link, did you? Eight o'clock second lifetime. Yes, but did you join? You need, um, you need the link to all the sessions. So let me begin by giving that to you. Okay, hold on, let me share that. So you have you already shared that with Eastern you in the, Facebook, in the WhatsApp group, Maria. Oh, okay, great. You have all Thank the information you. Okay. there. Yeah, okay. Right. And please Thank share you, it darling. with other educators, please. <laughs> so, so, yes, yeah, tomorrow we have, the merrier. Yes, tomorrow. Yeah. And it was a great presentation. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Great to meet with you again, Mariel, after 20 years. Oh, yes, after 20 years. That was exciting. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Thank you everybody. so much.